Well, those of you who know me know that when I go to a conference, when I sit in on a sermon, I oftentimes will have my laptop out or my phone or my iPad, and I'm taking notes on it. And, and, I, and I do a fairly good job of trying to keep up with the speaker and making somewhat copious notes. I do that in all kinds of meetings. It just helps me <laughs> to, to remember things. I, I went to the Transformation Ministries Conference this week, and I did not take out my iPad, my Apple, or my phone. And now I have no idea what the speaker said. <laughs> I do remember something about a rubber band. <laughs> and and one, of the, one of the speakers, I think it was, his name was Caleb. I don't even know their names, okay? I do know it was a guy with a no hair haircut, okay? And he looked like Fester, okay? Anyways, uh, and, and, he, and he was talking about the tension that we have of following God and that there's this tension even, and, and, and he's pulling the rubber band both ways and, and that tension comes in all different kinds of ways. And I think that as we come here this morning, um, every time you come to any kind of a sermon, any kind of time you come to any kind of a presentation from the word of God, you're, you're at a place where you have to decide, are you gonna respond to it or not? In fact, like, it's sometimes dangerous to come to hear a sermon. Because if that sermon has words from God that say, here's something you should do, and you really say, oh my, I really need to do that. Do you know that it's really dangerous because if you don't follow through, that's a really bad thing between you and God. And it's a dangerous thing as a pastor. Well, do I, do I preach to them about obeying the word today? Because if I do, I'm actually bringing some sense of judgment on you if you don't obey it, if you don't follow through, if you don't do something about it. And here's the thing, as you're sitting here today, and I'm really praying, in fact, that you're not just gonna have tickled ears, so to speak. Oh, wow, yeah, well, yeah, great sermon. I have no idea what he said, but a great sermon, Pastor Bill, right? You know, yeah, he really tickled me, really got me going, got me excited, you know. But I had a pa uh, my professor in homiletics, you know what homiletics is? It's not about home cooking. It's about, it's about your preaching, right? It's a preaching class. And your homiletics, my homiletics professor um, at Fuller Seminary, uh, he, we're sitting there and we're just getting ready for our, for our practice sermons and all. And he says, one of the things that you need to be able to do when you preach a sermon is you need to be able to say, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. And a part of me said, Wow, you got to have a lot of gall to do that. I mean, you better really know. I mean, because what, what if God didn't say what you were saying? <laughs> and, and I say, but that's been a thought that I bring every time I come into the church. Every time I try to minister on behalf of Jesus Christ. If I cannot speak, thus says the Lord, I really shouldn't be speaking. I have no authority in myself. And I need to tell you that every time I prepare a sermon, every time I prepare a message, I'm spending time sitting where you're sitting. I'm spending time trying to understand what the word means to me. What, what is the message that God has for me? Because if it doesn't speak to me, I'm not gonna do a very good job of speaking to you. So when you come, and, and here today, some of you, some of you have, 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 someone has their laptop right over here, okay? So, some of you have notes. Um, some of you get, get a copy of my sermon afterwards. In fact, uh, this, it's all broken. You might as well take it now. I already punched the holes in it. Um, some of you come to life groups and small groups. Uh, some of you are actually doing some of the questions based on the text that we're doing, um, for, that we're doing here today. Uh, and, and what we're trying to do, and, and as you come to a message, are you coming here to hear from Jesus? Are you coming here expecting to hear from God? I still remember one of the days that I was praying for Reverend Ray J. Hunter. I say that because he was 80-some uh, years old at the time. He was the seniors pastor at our church. And, and frankly, most people, when Ray preached, the church was a lot emptier. 
the pastor was away on his vacation, the senior pastor, and so Ray would be one of the people who would preach, as well as some of the rest of us on staff. But this was when I first went there, and, and Ray was like the associate, so to speak, and so Reverend Ray J. Hunter would preach. And Ray would go on and on and on and on with his messages and it was hard at times to keep up with his speed that he was going. And, and, the, and the young people, I can remember, the young people said, Race? Oh, no, I'm not going to church today. I'm not going to worship. And, and I remember one Sunday, I'm sitting there, and, and I'm listening to Ray, and I started praying. I started praying for Ray. I started praying that God would speak through Ray. I started praying that God would, 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 would really empower him, that, that God would anoint him, that God would give each of us the message that God wanted to give. And I'm telling you, that was one of the best sermons I heard in the church there. And afterwards, I'm like, you know, wow, what a great sermon. And I'm out, and people are like, that was boring. You know, oh, man, so glad we don't have to listen to Ray every week. I'm like, oh, that was great. You know, what was the difference? The difference had nothing to do with Ray. The difference was I had come praying and asking for God to speak to me. Amen. When you come and you hear it a day, are you here to get something from the Lord? Are you here to be somehow wowed by Pastor Bill? Because that, that probably won't happen. <laughs> but, but, but are you here to get something straight from God's throne? Because if you're seeking that, God's going to speak to you. And the incredible thing is, is that God has given us his word just for that purpose. The anointed, inspired, God-breathed word is there for us to listen and hear from him. And so I just want to challenge and encourage you, whenever you're sitting where you're sitting, to be praying that God speaks to you. And don't worry about the vessel that God's going to use that's up at the front. So do you take notes? Yeah. After you leave here, <laughs> what do you do with what you heard? Just kind of forget it? Like, oh, that was cool. That was nice. That was boring. <laughs> what do you do when you go out those doors? What? Well, does the message, what effect does the message have on your life when you leave this room? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 to 21, that's our text. We're going to do two verses this week. I know some of you are surprised. We've been doing <laughs> one verse lately. We'll, we'll get back to one verse again next week, but, <laughs> but we're going to do two whole verses this week. But I think you could memorize this too. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. But test them all, hold on to what is good. Hey, that wasn't that bad, right? Nice and short. You still could handle that. Don't treat prophecies with contempt. And, and we're going to touch on this a little bit. What, what is a prophecy? Well, um, Paul in 1 Corinthians 14 actually starts to explain the difference between a prophecy and tongues. Some of you say, what's tongues? Well, <laughs> tongues is an ecstatic utterance, give, a gift given by the Holy Spirit. It's a heavenly language. It's a language that's not from here. It's a, and then it's a language that if you're going to pray, it needs to be interpreted. It's a, it's a gift that's oftentimes given for the building up of an individual. I know there's all different kinds of opinions about tongues, but I just got to tell you, the Holy Spirit has not stopped giving out his gifts. Holy Spirit still gives out those gifts, even if we think they're weird or we're uncomfortable with them. The Holy Spirit is still doing things like that. And we need to be careful that we're not going against or trying to stop, hinder, roadblock the power of the Holy Spirit. But he goes on and he says, in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. There, you're just learning something else about tongues. It's a gift that is for prayer that communicates between us and the Lord. And then he goes on. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. 
And, and so the gift of tongues is something that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit, and it helps us. In fact, in another place it says that, that the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. You think about that. The Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. There's sometimes that I can't, I don't have the words to put to what God's trying to do in me or say to me and, and what I'm trying to say to God. And it may be that I just have to cry out to Him. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3 goes on. It says, But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Now, right there, Paul is giving us a very important clue as to what prophecy is. Prophecy is going to encourage, strengthen, and comfort other people. Do you see it? Prophecies have been thought themselves to be ecstatic utterances, but, but look at what the word says. They, in fact, Paul is going to go on through the, the rest of the chapter. He's going to keep talking back and forth about these two gifts, and especially about the gift of prophecy and this ability to take the word of God and to encourage and strengthen and comfort the body of Christ. In fact, he's even going to go on to say that if an unbeliever comes in and you're prophesying, that unbeliever is going to be affected, going to be encouraged, maybe even strengthened, maybe even comforted. Because you're speaking the word of God and you're applying the word of God into somebody's life. You're making it real for them. Uh, by the way, just to also note, words of knowledge can actually be prophecies, can't they? A word of knowledge may come from somebody where, the, where God says, you need to go up and, and tell, and I forget your name. Caleb, I'm supposed to know that. Okay, you may come up to Caleb and say, I'm just, I'm just supposed to tell Caleb, don't give up. And what you didn't know was, is this, that was, and this is not Caleb, he didn't say that to me, I'm just making this up, okay, right? <laughs> but what maybe you didn't know if God tells you to do that is this, that, that Caleb was having one of those days where he's like, I don't know if I'm going to continue this path. I just don't know if I, any, if I have the energy. I don't know if I can go on. And God said, go tell Caleb, don't give up. And you're like, okay, I have no idea. I don't, I don't think I'm going to say it because he's going to think I'm weird if I go and tell him that. God can give us words of knowledge, okay, where we actually can have something, a message for somebody else that comes from God. But I got to tell you this, all prophecy, all words of knowledge, all gifts like that have to line up with Scripture. They will not contradict Scripture. How about this one? Oh, God doesn't really love you. He told me to tell you God doesn't love you. Does that line up with Scripture? Doesn't line up with scripture, does it? <laughs> so if somebody brings you something like that, you check the scripture. If it doesn't line up with scripture, you just run. <laughs> okay? You just, yeah, run. Because <laughs> that person is not giving you a message from God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The messages have got to line up with the word of God. Uh, Hebert said, believers need to be on a guard against any professed revelation from the Spirit today that goes beyond or is inconsistent with the revelation embodied in the Scriptures. If I, as a preacher, stand up here and I start telling you something, you say, well, that doesn't sound like what the Bible says. Should you go test it? Mm -hmm. You better. That, we'll come back to that in just a little while. But before we get there, he just said, do not quench, excuse me, wrong verse, wrong verse. <laughs> do not treat prophecies with contempt. Don't treat prophecies. Don't treat words of strengthening and encouragement and comfort with contempt. If God's got something for you, don't be, oh, I'm not going to listen to that. You, you hear the message, right? God tells you to do something like, we're supposed to be yet allowing the word of God to speak to us. We're supposed to be open to prophetic things from God where God wants to speak to encouragement into our life, strength into our life, wants to build us up. We're supposed to allow him to say things to us. Uh, I don't want to listen, God. Ooh, that's treating the prophecy with contempt. Stedman said, don't ignore the scripture's wisdom. 
Unfortunately, because of certain cultic tendencies in our day, we think of prophesying as some special power to predict the future, either for ourselves individually or for the world at large. But prophesying was not that. Prophesying is declaring the mind of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Prophesying is being able to say, thus says the Lord. And oh my, it's my prayer, isn't it? And I hope yours. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. If I cannot stand in front of you and say, this is from the Lord, I don't want to say it. If we're not going to despise prophecies, James Denny said, then we've got to look for something from the preacher, some word of God that will build us up in godliness or bring us encouragement or consolation. It requires us to listen as those who have a precious opportunity given them of being strengthened by divine grace and truth. We actually have to come here wanting to hear from the Lord. Do you have that desire? Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you something today. If, if one of the students gets sleepy today, starts getting worn out, because you all have been running and working out and all that kind of stuff. Some of you guys are like this, right? You've got a job that's out there, got you on the road. If somebody starts to fall asleep during my message, let them sleep unless they snore too loud, okay? And then, then just bump them. But, but otherwise, because the, the fact is, is that you're here and God still is going to try to touch you with his love. Right? And I hope that every time you come into an experience like this, go into a small group, go to a Bible study, go to anything like that, I hope you're coming with some sense of desire. I want God to speak to me. And what's amazing is that God wants to speak to you. That's special. Oh, here's another interesting thing that Paul teaches us about prophecies. Did you know that every believer has the opportunity to prophesy? prophesy? Well, look at this, what 1 Corinthians 14 goes on to say. Verse 4, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. And then jump to verse 31. For you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. Uh, we've talked about the word all, haven't we? What does all mean? <laughs> all means all, right? So when it says you can all prophesy, who here can prophesy then according to that verse? All of you can, right? Anyone can. Did you know that any time that you talk to somebody else about God's love for them, any time that you share what we call the gospel, the good news, any time you tell them, look, Jesus loves you so much, he died on a cross, he rose from the dead, he's coming again, he cares about you. Any time you're doing that, did you know you're prophesying? Oh, cool. Did you know that if you go along somebody, whoever maybe goes to that funeral with Trisha, for Trisha tomorrow, that anybody goes there and goes up to one of those family members and just says, I care. I care. I care. Do you know that you're prophesying? Because you're coming alongside to what? What was the third word about prophesying? To comfort. So that when you serve somebody in that kind of a way, and especially if you somehow, if God gives you the, his, his written word to somehow encourage them that God is pro speaking prophetically, God is prophesying through you. And it says, every believer can do that. Every believer can tell the lost then people who don't know Jesus about God's love. Every believer can, can literally tell their story of what God has done for them and how God has spoke to them. We were just talking about this yesterday with the men. And, and I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, God gave us a miracle, didn't he? In fact, we prayed right here as a church, we prayed for Tricia and for Casey, and we didn't even know the baby yet. And we prayed that God would give life to that baby. And not only did God give life, but God carried her through, get, had the doctors do a surgery so that she could then get rid of the cancer long enough so Liam could grow to maturity enough to be born. And this week, Liam went home with his family. 
folks, if you're not hearing it, that's a miracle. Kim Karn has gone to the doctor recently. Kim has pancreatic cancer. It's terminal. Uh, He actually, based on a lot of the things, should have already died. And the doctor just recently said to Kim and Eileen, I don't know why you're doing so well. I don't know why you're still here. Eileen said, I know why. Sitting right over there about where Shauna was sitting was where Kim was when the whole church surrounded him and prayed for him. And... And Eileen says, the whole church prayed for him. And God's the one that's been helping him. Now, they still know, and right now, you know what Kim's prayer is right now? I hope I make it to Christmas to be with the family for Christmas. And he may make it to Christmas. And the amazing thing is, is that God has been giving them a miracle. A miracle, folks. Does God answer prayer? Patricia died. Patricia died. She gave birth to Liam. The nurses kept Liam in the hospital long enough for Tricia to keep holding him until the last couple days when she was no longer able to. They kept him there so she could still be with him. They brought Liam to her so Liam could still be with mommy. Do you know that the hospital, I think I told you this last week, the hospital actually paid for a professional photographer to come in and take pictures of Liam and Casey and Trisha together so that Liam will have a memory later and be able to see this is mommy. And he'll not meet her here. He'll not meet her till he gets to heaven. And yet, it was a miracle that Liam lives. And God says, we all have been given the gift of being a prophet, of prophesying. You see, when we prophesy, we help to apply the word of God to somebody else's life. Isn't that what we do in a life group? It's what you're going to do in your small group? Is, is we're helping somebody else to apply the word of God to their life. We, we prophesy when, we, when we're discussing the word. We're like, I don't understand what that means. What does that mean to you? And as we talk about that, we're prophesying to one another. We're prophesying when we let the word of God convict us and when we actually share something maybe that convicts somebody else. And when we let the word of God change us, prophecy has been taking place. And our preaching, whatever that is, should be something that helps people to get to know Jesus better. Ephesians says it this way, that the chapter 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We want people through what we're sharing to know the hope of God. So think about it. How Paul, Paul said, don't despise prophecies. So what are some ways maybe we despise prophecies without even thinking about it? Well, I was thinking of one, just don't listen. And by the way, to listen means to do, (laughs) okay? And and so Jesus talked about the two sons, and and he says to the two sons, I want you to go out and work in the field. And the one says, I'm not going. And the other one says, I'll go. And later, the one who said he would go didn't go. But the one who said he wouldn't go went out into the field and did the work. And Jesus asked the Pharisees the question, who did the Father's will? In other words, who listened? They both heard. One said no, one said yes, but only one went. Who listened? Who acted? Who obeyed? I can't help but thinking what Jesus said when he talked about the parable of the soils. And the first three soils are really interesting because he said, first off, he said the seed, when he was talking about the parable of the soils, you know, Do you know the story? Jesus 
So it talks about the, the soil, and he says there's a sower, and he went out to sow seed, and some of the seed fell on the pathway, and the birds came and took it away. Some of it fell on stony ground, and, and the, the, the plant came up really, really fast, but the heat and everything else scorched the plant, and it died. And some of it fell on ground with thorns, and, and the thorns choked the, the, the plant, and they never were able to, to bear fruit. But he says, then, and some of the soil fell on really good, excuse me, some of the seeds fell on really good soil and, and it was able to then grow and bear harvest and, and fruit and all. And then later they said, well, tell us what that means. And what did Jesus say? Well, Jesus explained. He says, first off, the seed is the word of God and the soils, well, that's, that's us. And he said, the seed falls on the path. Well, that's the people who, they hear the word of God, but the devil comes and snatches it and they don't even believe. They heard it. It never went into anything. It was on the pathway. It didn't get into the ground at all. The second seed, he says, okay, well, that's the seed. It, it started to get a little bit of root. That's the people who they heard the word of God, and they're really excited about it. And maybe they're even sitting there and, yeah, pastor, preach it. Amen. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm with you, pastor. How come, how come there's no amens here? Okay, anyways. <laughs> Do it, pastor, okay? And so, and so, and so you, yeah, I'm doing and, and they go out the door, and they forget exactly. They, I don't have any idea what he talked about today. Sure was fun, though. No. And so, so that's the, the path. They hear with excitement, but they fall away. There's no root. And then, and then Jesus said there's the, the ground with, that's got thorns all around it. It's got weeds all around it. It's going to choke it up. And, the, and that's the people, they hear. They hear the word of God and they say, yes. But they allow life's worries, riches, and pleasures to choke the word of God out of their life. The things they worry about, their riches and their pleasures, the things that become more important than God himself, and it chokes the word of God. In our text this morning, Paul said that we need to avoid, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Test them all. Test every prophetic word. Test every time somebody says, okay, this is something from God. Test every time somebody is speaking from the word of God. If he literally says, test everything. Examine it carefully. See if it's from God. And how do you do that? You check it compared to the word of God itself. 1 John 4 says it this way. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And this is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Test everything. And if something is not lining up with Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is God himself. If it doesn't line up with that, it's not from God. 